Hello, Preposterous. I'm not sure if I've made a new best friend or a new worst enemy. See this? This is a diagram I was working on, which I was going to talk all about the difference between proof and science, and the difference between, and uh, sorry, and the proof in uh, mathematics. But you cut the legs right out from under me. I'm going to have to vent my frustrations here by uh, going after you. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, y your video is actually quite excellent, and I, I like how you really highlight the difference between uh, mathematics and uh, science and the way they approach proof. But there's a. I, I think you you've opened up too wide of a gap, though. See, see when you said uh, the ball. Remember, you're an example. Your your ball's rolling down, takes four seconds, but you know you're not sure whether it's precise or not, or whether it's. You know, in, in any event, the the point is the science in the science world. They don't just tell you that it's uh, four seconds, or four point zero zero five seven seconds, or whatever it was, um, but they tell you that uh, if you do it again it will take the same amount of time. It'll still be 4 seconds or 4.0057 or whatever it is. Right? So science doesn't tell you just about uh, certain little things like that. It, it has repeatability in it. And, and um, so um, anyway, so the thing is, uh, you, your distinct, the distinction you made between math and science was that you said that math is based on axioms that are just sort of picked out of a hat, like Euclid's axioms, and that science was just based on observation. And what I would say is that is a bit of a simplification, because science actually uses a very math-oriented uh, approach to things. What what happens in science is axiom. Um, Rather than axioms, they make observations. You know, scientists make observations uh, f from the real, real world, which becomes their empirical evidence. In other words, they are empiricists, um, and these em this empirical evidence makes up their set of axioms. The models then they that they then build on top of them. They they just borrow machinery from mathematics to build formulas, and uh, you know and uh, and the that's that's the way. So, so, in other words, science, in a sense, is like mathematics and like just mathematics with different set of axioms, right? And you can see this, uh, like for example, in a recent video that was linked here, I, I was watching. Um, uh, uh, Richard Dawkins used uh, the prisoner's dilemma to uh, learn something about or to study something about biology and uh, or how evolution works and how al altruism happens. And uh, you know, as you know, the prisoner's dilemma is a very mathematical thing. Um, and computer scientists you could just view as an extension of mathematics, right? Um, theoretical physics, is, of course, uh, has has very little empiricism in it, and <laughs> you, you could argue is nothing more than just a particular mathematics. But in any event, um, uh, so your distinction is, isn't, I don't think, is is that extreme as you're making it, but. Uh, part of the reason is because you, you've missed something in the math part. I, in mathematics, you don't simply pick axioms out of a hat. The axioms have to be somewhat self-consistent. Otherwise, it would you know if, if the axioms just aren't consistent, it'll, it'll sort of fall apart pretty easily. So, um, and even in mathematics, there's a, 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 a subtle controversy about what is meant by proof. For example, the the four color theorem, as you know, um, uh, it, it, it it's presumably a proof, right? Because it follows a series of steps and so on, and uh, apparently is a complete proof. But the problem is, it only exists in the mind of a computer. A proof is so complicated that no human can ever understand it. So, what is so in a sense, so what is it? Who's it, who who has that been proven to? It's been proven to a computer, right? So. Um, uh, right, I was going to say something about the crisis in math, and I, I think I'm going to skip that. Um, anyway, so the, the point is mathematics 
in mathematics, what you do is you, you pick a sort of set of uh, axioms. You you know you sort of a a analyze it to see if it's self consistent, and then the truth becomes uh, defined by the, s the 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 set of things that follow from those axioms, right? And that 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 becomes the truth for math. Like so, you know, saying whether an axiom is true or not is well, no, no, it, it the, the axioms define your truth, right? Anyways, and s so I mean, this all stems from uh, uh, you know all these arguments going around about whether or not we can prove God exists or not, and uh, a lot of it is because of we're, we're banding about the the word proof a little bit too much here. Um, but the thing is, it's I don't think it makes sense for us to sort of uh, take the word proof as if it only belonged to mathematics because instead what we should do is we should say that there are different standards of proof and so in the diagram I showed there I was going to expand on that so I'll just do that here I guess um, obviously the standards of proof in uh, reverse order of decreasing uh, value I guess would be mathematics first of all the the standard of proof in mathematics is extremely high because um, the mathematics is sort of self-consistent and uh, you know it's completely axiomatic and isn't subject to differences in observation or anything like that science obviously is just one lower in that it only relies on empiricism uh, you know results from observation and so long as these results can be relied upon you know I we don't have you know it seems to be good for us so far um, we can you know, and so so long as the models that have been mapped on on them obviously w are correct, then uh, 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 science has a, a a pretty good level of uh, standard of proof as well. It's just not you know it's not rigorous. And you know, for so example, when Newton was superseded by uh, Einstein, it's like yeah okay. <laughs> um, uh, and then, but but I mean, the point is, but people keep using the word proof for for different things and. Uh, we can keep going down the line. Uh, the next one I would put is is legal standard of proof. Like, you know, in in law, they, they you want to prove something beyond a shadow of doubt, and uh, obviously, uh, I don't know, putting your f the faith of uh, truth or falseness down to twelve people's opinions. I don't know about that, right? Proof beyond reasonable doubt. That doesn't. That's not really rigorous, obviously. <laughs> Um, and even the legal profession themselves, they understand that their standard is lower, and so they'll often uh, s cite scientists, right? They'll, they uh, they recognize that science is a higher standard of proof for them, and they'll well, they'll prove put scientists on the witness stand, and they get to say things about science and uh, even not science sometimes, which puts even more question into the legal system, I guess. But Anyways, but then after that is philosophical level of proof because I don't know philosophers don't philosophers do not have a laboratory so <laughs> I don't know uh, and then after that I would say uh, uh, UFOlogy and conspiracy theories and I don't know Loch Ness monster and stuff like that <laughs> their standard of proof is just and how well they can convince you. And then after that, of course, is religion. Um, religion, of course, takes logical fallacy uh, and just decides that they're true. I mean, so religion, like, is you know, you can just show a religion is contra religion is contradictory, and that doesn't phase a single <laughs> that will never phase uh, a follower. They're like, yeah, so what? Um, anyway, so that that was the that diagram, and I was gonna create this great video all about that. But uh, anyways, okay, well, so it appears there's another math nerd here on uh, YouTube. Okay, tell you what, I say we call a truce right now. And let's just divide up, divide it up. Okay, uh, Zeno's paradox or Russell's paradox? You know, you, I, I'm, I'm open, I'll p pick either one. You pick one, I'll pick the other. Uh, Banaktarsky and the Axiom of Choice, though, I, I gotta have that one. I got a soft spot for Banaktarsky. That one's so screwed up. I love that one. I, I have to have it. I'll give you uh, the Konigsberg Bridges and Pi. 
and the golden ratio you can all throw that in as an extra you can have those um, NP complete and girdles incompleteness theorem take whichever one you want <laughs> anyways uh, this is uh, fast descending so anyways uh, I'm uh, happy to have met you or seen you um, those are my thoughts to be later